Hi everyone, so today in lesson 2, we are going to learn how to inquire 3D part information. So we are going to learn how to use the material library, how to obtain mass properties, how to check stock, distance, radius, draft, thickness, and how to obtain different section views. So the first thing we are going to learn is how to assign a material to a part. Okay, so we open a part that we want to use. Notice that I'm actually opening a step file. Okay, which is possible. Okay, so you see that your part is actually pretty far away from the origin. Okay, so what we will do is we will press Ctrl U on the keyboard and it will fit into your window nicely. Okay, so we will go to the Tools tab bar, okay, over here, and then we go to Material. So under the Shapes box over here, we will select our shape, okay, and we will go down to this drop down list and we will assign Material Aluminium 6061 to this part. And when it's done, we will click OK. So now the material is assigned to this part over here. Next, we are going to inquire the mass property of this part over here. So what we are going to do is we are going to head over to the Inquire tab over here. Okay, we select Mass Properties. Okay, we select the shape over here. Okay, then we can see that the density is actually prompted over here. Once we click OK, okay, there's this mass property pop-up box that appears. So we can notice that there's a lot of mass properties that is given. The area, density, volume and mass. Okay, we can also know the centroid and moment of inertia. So we just click OK. So the next part we are going to learn is how to change the work coordinate system. So we take a look at this part over here. Okay, where the three axes are over here, this part is your reference point. We also call it the work coordinate system. So if we take a look over here, we go to check our thickness, okay, over here. I will just change it to front view so you can actually see that even when we check thickness, which will be elaborated later on on the next part, okay, we take a look at the x, y, z over here. So the x, y, z, okay, for the x, it is close to approximately zero because y it is near the origin of the x-axis. So for z, it is about 35, or if I go higher, it will actually increase. Okay, for y, it is negative because we take a look y is actually pointing in this direction okay upwards okay over here so on this surface it will be the negative side of y-axis so if i put it over here it will be negative 25 okay because y-axis is pointing here y-axis is pointing here and I am putting my point over here. So I always have a negative 25 because it's to the left of y axis at a distance of 25. Okay. So now when I change my WCS over here, I click on move to change on my WCS. Okay, I will click on move entities along a direction so i click on the entity box and then i highlight the whole part okay i'll click on the direction box okay now i click on this x direction okay i will move my wcs all the way here okay i'll just input negative 190 Okay, so you note that in this preview, the WCS is over here at the center point of this circle. Okay, I'll click OK because this is where I would like it to be. So now you notice that the WCS, instead of it being here, it has now shifted to this side over here. So now when I take any directions, it will be referenced to this point instead of this point. Okay, we take a look. We go back 
to inquire to the same function which will be elaborated later on okay we take a look if we put our point back to here like before now the x actually shows negative 190 which means it is no longer zero because the axis is not here anymore it is from here so the distance from here to here is 190 and is in a negative direction so it is negative 190 as for the z because it is still from the same level upwards direction with the same length it will be about 30 something which is the same as previously okay y will also be the same because it is still from the same point over here okay in the same y plane so this is how we move our work coordinate system and our measurements will actually be taken with reference to our work coordinate system. Next, we are going to learn how to check stock. So check stock is especially important if you want to know the raw size and dimension of the material. Okay, so we click on shape, we go to stock. Under the stock type, we will select block because this is not a cylindrical type material. We will click this shape over here. And then for the plane, we will choose a surface that is parallel to the surface of the raw material. Okay, so we can see that the stock size is in estimation of these values. Okay, we can click OK and then you obtain your stock. Okay, next we are going to learn how to obtain a distance, measurement of a distance. So we go to inquire, we select distance. Okay, under the type of distance, in this case, we will select point to point. Okay, we will try to measure the distance between two points over here. Okay, so you can zoom in using the scroll. Okay, and then you pen using the right mouse button. Okay, so for the first point, we want to select the center of this circle over here. So how do we do that? Okay, you just head over to the circle over here. You right click, okay, center of curvature. Okay, so when you click on it, it will automatically select the center. So for the second point, we will use the right mouse click to hover up. Okay. And then do the same thing, right mouse click, center of curvature, select the curve, okay. Now we will obtain the distance between the centers of the two circle, okay, as seen over here. Next, we are going to do a radius analysis. This is actually convenient if we want to see in an overall picture uh, what are the sizes of the different radius in this model. Okay, we will head on to inquire as well, analyze faces. So for the type of analysis, we will do radius checking. Okay, over here. And then we can click OK. But you notice that there's actually only green and red color over here. Okay for the bar over here and then it only shows all the red what does this mean okay you see the value 0 all the way to 50 it means the radius from 0 to 50 okay but this object over here this part over here does not have such a wide range so what we're going to do is that we are going to change the setting okay we are going to use rainbow color so you can see that over here the rainbow color has changed okay for the maximum we will estimate it to be maybe about 10 okay so the range is now instead of 0 to 50 it will become 0 to 10 we click on ok and then we can see the difference in the radius analysis okay so for this blue color portion over here Okay, we can notice that it's same as this blue color, which means the radius is around 5. Whereby the part over here, which is green, it will be around 4. Okay, the radius over here in orange, okay, this part would be around 1. Okay, okay, next we are going to do a check radius on this part over here to check a specific radius of the part. 
okay so what we do is we go to inquire now we will head on to surface curvature okay so we will hover our mouse you do not need to click you just have to hover your mouse over any curved surface surfaces for example you see over here that this is a curved surface so we will just hover our mouse over here and then you can actually see immediately the values of the radius curvature and diameter over here so you can see that it is actually around three okay now we will do a draft analysis so the draft analysis will be similar to the radius analysis we will also use inquire hit on to analyze phases okay so then we will choose the setting as draft checking okay same thing as before you see over here there's red and green so mostly the angle would be negative 90 and 90 which means the surfaces are perpendicular if you would like to have a more detailed surface or coloring you can click on use rainbow coloring okay so this will be a more detailed draft analysis okay so we can set the angle to be 90 so we know that the angle is about 90 okay and then we can see over here the purple color will correspond to this angle over here and then the green will correspond to these angles over here okay so where are what are these angles with reference to they are actually with reference to your wsc as mentioned previously okay now we will learn how to do a check draft so we will also head on to inquire tab and then we will click on check draft okay so in order to check draft we will first click on this browse angle section so the box over here is highlighted in green then we will just hover our mouse over any surfaces and you can see that the angle is being shown on top okay So the angle will be with reference to your WSC as well. Okay, so now we are going to create a draft. So first thing first, we will go back to inquire and analyze phase. Okay, we will do a draft analysis over here. We click OK. So then we can actually see over here that there is actually a black surface, which means it is a flat surface. So we are trying to create a draft over here. So we will hover our mouse over here until this line is highlighted in yellow. Then we do a right click. Okay, we click on draft. Okay, and then we will input the angle, draft angle as 3. Okay, then we click OK. So we can see that, you see, the draft angle actually is changed. Okay, the surface is now pink. So which means the draft angle is 3 instead of black color, which means it is 0. Okay, next we will learn how to check the thickness of the object. So you go to inquire and then we will head over to thickness analysis. Select over here the browse T section. You must click on it so that there's a green highlighted box. Okay, we will then just hover the mouse over any section and then we can see that there's actually a T over here okay x y z and then t so which means this portion here the thickness is actually 2 mm this portion here the thickness is also 2.003 mm okay so on and so forth so this part here t is 17 which means the height over here is 17 as well okay so now i can also do a thickness analysis okay i will select my whole face over here okay and then i will go to check the rainbow coloring box okay the maximum i will set it to about probably 35 okay depending on how you estimate it okay then you click on start analyze so we will give it some time to load okay once the thickness analysis is completed we click on continue Okay, and then we can observe the difference in the thickness over here. So you can see all the different thickness over here. Lastly, we will also learn how to do a section view. Okay, first thing first, we will hit on to inquire. We will select section over here. 
So for the type of sectioning, in this case, we will do section at plane. Okay, and then we will choose alignment of plane to alignment at the front plane. So you see now the alignment is over here, which is the top plane. Okay, but now we are going to change it to the front plane. You notice it changes to the front plane. Okay, so now we also select invisible section shape. Okay, which means, okay, for example, if I section the shape, okay, it will go invisible. If I choose the wireframe one, it will actually show up. Okay, so I will go to invisible. Then I will head on to my hatch style. I will want this hatch style. Okay, then we can actually do the sectioning by pulling the axis like I did before over here. So this is a very good feature because we can actually see if there are any undercuts or whatsoever that we did not actually observe before. Okay, so you can actually see that the section view over here is obtained. So you can actually change your section view to suit your preference. You can also cut from this position. You can cut over here. You can cut from the top over here as well. Okay. Other than that, we can also do a sectioning or with envelope, okay? Which means to say I can section here as well as I want to section over here. Okay, so now you can see this part over here. Okay, so it depends on where you want to cut. So now we will move on to do uneven sectioning. For example, I want to section this part over here, then I want to come down and then section this part over here. How do I do it? Okay, you head on to Shape tab, click on Sketch, okay, and then you select the plane. I will select the XY plane because it is parallel to the top surfaces. Okay, I'll click on XY plane, click OK. Okay, so now you can see that my drawing is actually out of the region. I will do the right mouse click and then I drag and hold so I can do a pen. Okay, I can move it around. Then I click on draw. Okay, then I can draw the lines. Okay, so I will draw from the center of this circle. Okay, right here. Okay, you can scroll your mouse to zoom in. So now I have completed a closed profile. Remember, it must always be a closed profile. Okay, so that we can actually section it properly. Now we click on this icon over here. This icon here is the exit icon. Okay, so click on this exit icon. Okay, so now you can see that your sketch is over here. Okay, so what we can do is we can head over to the Inquire tab, we click on Section, okay, so then we will click on this section with Profile over here, okay, we select your profile to be this, okay, so we can select the type of sectioning to be either one-sided, two-sided or symmetrical, I will choose symmetrical, so I will just have to enter the end point. For example, if I enter 100, so both sides will cut symmetrically 100. Okay, so you can observe that it actually is an uneven sectioning. Okay, so we can see the hole over here section out and here as well, and then it comes over here. Okay, you can do your rotation with your middle mouse button and pen with your right mouse button. Okay. Okay, so this is the end of lesson 2. You can head on to lesson 3 to learn more about the healing methods to fix a broken part.